And so we come out here to tell you about this love and that you might experience this love and the forgiveness of your sins. That you might understand the goodness and the severity of God. There is a day that will be severe for those who rebel, for those who disobey. And that's many of you. Many of you mock and scoff and you ridicule even in your mind when you hear the word of God. Or even when you see the sign that warns you of the seriousness of sin. God said having sex out of marriage is sin. God said sodomy is sin. God says lying is sin. God says drunkenness is sin. The measure of all things is the creator who has created you. And you're going to stand before him. And you are undone. You are unclean. And you yeah. mock and you, yeah. you shout about it. And you're all happy about it. Yeah. But you don't realize the seriousness of that. You don't realize that God is holy and just. And he must render to you according to your deeds. And so we come out that you might turn from being a, a whoremonger. That you might turn from being a sodomite. That you might turn from being a lesbian. You can turn. You can surrender. You can repent. You can acknowledge your crimes against the holy God, and God will forgive and cleanse and renew. But if you rebel and disobey, and you continue on that broad road, you're going you're gonna to see what happens at the end when your heart stops beating, and you're in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. You are tormented in eternal torment because of your sin and rebellion. You have disobeyed God. You have rebelled against God. God has revealed that all men have sinned. All men have broken God's law. All men are guilty. And the only way that you can be set free from the punishment of your sin is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not difficult to understand. God is the one that says you have sinned. And now God comes to you again and tries to get your attention to repent, to turn, to confess your sin, and agree with God and go and sin no more. Will you turn? Will you repent? Will you acknowledge your sin? Will you humble yourself? Will you agree with God that you're a sinner? Will you surrender? Oh, you are in danger. You're in serious trouble. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to warn you of this coming day. And it could happen today. It could happen right now. I mean, your heart can stop beating right now. You're not guaranteed the next five minutes. Ten out of ten die. Everyone dies. It's an absolute. It's going to happen. You're going to die and you're going to stand before the creator of heaven and earth. And his name is Jesus Christ and you're going to give an account to him. And we're concerned about your soul. Many of you are blinded by the devil. You are caught up in your sin, your pride, your arrogance, your self-will. And you mock and you laugh at God. And you don't realize the seriousness of your sin. You don't understand the Bible is true. It's, it's, it reveals your guilty conscience. It reveals that you're a liar. You have lied and your lies will send you to hell. You're a thief and you, as a thief, will go to hell. You're, you're a fornicator. You have sex out of marriage and that's an offense against God. You will stand before a holy and righteous and just judge and all things that offend will be cast into a furnace of affliction where there will be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. But you're not concerned about your sin. You're not concerned about your rebellion. You're not concerned about your unbelief. You're just having a good time and God would come out again to warn you, to speak to you about your sin, that you would repent, believe on Jesus. But most of you you just suppress the truth. You reject the truth. You ignore the truth. You've been given over to a strong delusion to believe a lie. But we have come out that you might hear the truth and the truth would set you free. Oh no, I'm just a messenger. The truth is Jesus Christ. When you surrender to his lordship, that means he's in control of your life. No longer do you rule or reign, but you surrender all to him. You deny yourself. You forsake everything. You forsake all your selfish ambitions. You forsake your lust and your pleasure, your entertainment, all your, your amusements. You forsake your life and you deny yourself and pick up the cross and follow Jesus Christ. Now if you, if you reject Jesus Christ and you love this world and the things of this world, I'm telling you the love of the Father is not in you. Because all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life are not of the Father, but they're of this world. Lucifer, the devil. And you are participating in the deeds of darkness. You're walking in darkness. So we bring the light to you that you might surrender. You might turn. You have to repent or you will perish. And you're not concerned about burning in hell. You think there's a party in hell. And you have been deceived. Oh no, it's endless suffering. Eternal torment. 
And you think I want you to go to hell? I don't want you to go to hell. That's why we're out here trying to get your attention to think about this. Think about eternity. Think about Judgment Day. Visualize Judgment Day when you die and you stand before God. That one lie will send you to hell. Really? How are you going to escape? You neglect so great a salvation. Will not the judge of the whole earth do right? I'm happy. I'm saved. I'm forgiven. Yeah, I have an eternity. I have a destiny. I have a future. I have a hope. I have a promise from God. And I stand on the promises. But you have ignored what God has written. You will not open up the Word of God and read the Bible and see that these things be true. And they speak against you if you rebel against Jesus Christ. Or if you're born again, oh, and Jesus Christ is Lord of your life, then they speak life. They speak life and peace and joy. But if you despise God's Word, you're going to be destroyed. But if you keep His commandments, you will be rewarded. Because truly there is a reward for the righteous. But the wicked are turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. You understand the seriousness of your rebellion, your disobedience, your anarchy? Do you understand? Hey, I'm concerned about you, man. I'm concerned about you. You're going to die. You're going to stand before God. I bring church to you. i got to bring church out to you. You miss church. You were so wrapped up in the beta breaker, you missed church. So I brought church to you. I brought the word of God to you. That you might understand of your idolatry, the praise of men, all that you that, that satisfies your flesh, but you're never satisfied. True. Hell has enlarged itself. It's opened its mouth beyond measure. You understand hell and destruction are never full. Neither are the eyes of man ever satisfied. You have to have another party, another concert. Oh, something to do to suppress the pain, the wounds, the scars, your sin, your guilt. And then the spirit of the living God comes to you again. Reveals to you again your sin. You'll have no excuse on judgment day. You'll have no excuse when you stand before God and he renders to you according to your deeds. You're going to remember every time God came to you. You're going to remember every time God convicted your conscience, troubled your mind, spoke to you by messengers, spoke to you, but you loved your sin. Oh, you love to do what you want when you want. And you don't realize that on the day of judgment, your friends are not going to be there. Your dogs are not going to be there. Nope, your husband's not going to be there. Your kids are not going to be there. You're going to stand before God alone and be judged by God alone. And I'm a messenger to tell you to repent. So when you stand there, you have a mediator, Jesus Christ, to forgive you of your sins. That he will stand in the gap for you. And he will say, this one I died for. This one had faith in me. This one believed in me. This one's born again. Are you born again? If you are not born again, you will not enter the kingdom of God. You have to be born from above. You need to repent. You need to turn. You need to climb off of the throne of self. You rule yourself. You think you're better than God, stronger than God. You make up your own rules and you go your own way and you don't understand that you are accountable. That God has a book of remembrance and everything that you do will be opened on that day. And every time you had sex out of marriage, every time you sodomized your neighbor, every time you lied, every time you were a thief in your pornography, and your, oh yeah, having sex with yourself, everything will be laid bare on that day. Oh yeah, it's your sin. Your sin will find you out unless you want to turn to Jesus Christ. You want to turn to Jesus Christ and surrender right now? You want to get on your knees and beg for mercy? You deserve hell. You deserve hell because you are rotten to the core. Oh, yes, you're vile. Oh, it's sick. Oh, the sinful nature, the human nature. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. We're so selfish and self-centered until the love of Christ comes in and sets you free. Until the love of Christ redeems you and changes you. You need a radical lifestyle change. That's why God says repent. So that your heart of stone may be taken away and a heart of flesh would come that you might understand the mind of God and the will of God. We point you to Jesus Christ, not to a church. Oh no, not to a prayer. Not to, not to you just running after religion and your own good works. No, your good works will send you to hell. Yeah, your good works, your self-righteousness is filthy rags before a holy God. Oh, you have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. None of you are righteous. None of you are good. You're all undone and unclean until you come to Christ and He makes you righteous. He imputes that righteousness by faith. Do you believe? Are there a lot